Over seven years, GT Academy has taken the best gamers from around the world and transformed them into professional racing drivers. Winners have gone from virtual to reality, competing around the globe, winning podiums and racing in the top class of the biggest races on the planet. The racing experiment has gone on to be the most innovative driver development programme in the world and has embraced gamers from over 30 countries worldwide, producing more winners than ever. But there have been errors, crashes and failures. For every podium there have been retirements. Not every winner of GT Academy has made the grade. This year, to make sure they succeed, we will follow the team as GT Academy goes back to basics. The first GT Academy was held in 2008 as an experimental way to unearth driving talent via PlayStation's Gran Turismo game. Joining the PlayStation Nissan GT team in Dubai, Lucas Odonis. It resulted in Spaniard Lucas Ordonez being crowned the inaugural champion. The concept was the brainchild of Nissan's director of motorsports, Darren Cox. Like any good idea, GT Academy is actually very, very simple. Can you take a gamer and turn him into a racing driver? Now, of course, we've seen in the last eight years that we can, but 10 years ago, when the idea came up, no one had done it before. There were two schools of thought madness and genius and I genuinely was in the latter taking somebody from a virtual background somebody with a massive level of confidence and within their gaming world an exceptional level of skill if you can tap into that vein of form which has made them an exceptional online gamer I was genuinely intrigued and we've seen what the gamers have gone on to do since gamers in the main turn a steering wheel they push the pedals and they turn around corners use the brakes and they race against other people they're just in the virtual world and what we've done and we've proved is that they could do it in the real world. Since Lucas Ordonez won the first GT Academy in 2008, there have been a further 21 winners who have joined the GT Academy alumni. But after winning the competition, there is no guarantee they will go on and make it as pro racing drivers. After winning GT Academy, that is just the start basically of your training. You have to put in even more legwork, the training gets even harder and the expectation on you gets much bigger. One story that hasn't really been told a lot, there wasn't just one winner in the first GT Academy. There was a young man called Lars Schlommer who was a taxi driver from Germany and him and Lucas were supposed to be the first two winners but Lars, unfortunately, didn't make the grade. He didn't adapt himself to a professional racing driver and we had to drop him. We give the guys the tools they need to do the job. We give them all the information they need. We train the living daylights out of them in terms of psychological preparation, physical preparation and driver coaching. But sometimes it's up to them to challenge themselves and not just take things for granted. It's very fine lines between the, the guys that go on to have many years of racing and, and the ones that perhaps don't get invited back. Very, very, very fine margins. We look for speed and consistency, and that's the package. The fastest, most consistent driver is the one that really cuts it. And the difference between the, the quicker and the slower drivers can be literally half a second, but that's it, and that's what we need. The thing that separates the guys that go on and have a successful career and the guys who maybe do one season or just do Dubai and stop is, is the attitude and the willingness to learn and that sportsman-like mentality to, to really fight to be the best. You see people like Wolfie and Lucas and Jan, Mark, they're big fighters, you know, they want to win more than anything. This is all they want to do. We surround the guys in their driver development programme. So the guys we choose here at race camp, they go on into the DDP and they have to work with their coaches. They have to listen, they have to be quite humble. They have to realise there's a massive amount of information to take in in quite a short space of time. And coming to it with a bit of an ego, a bit of an attitude, won't win them any friends. The Driver Development Programme is an intensive training course which aims to transform the gamers into racing drivers in a matter of weeks and get them their professional racing licence. Well done, boy, well done. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to learn as fast as you can because you don't have much time to learn or to improve. Every single lap you do in a race car, you need to make the most of it and to really focus on what you are doing and how you can do to get better. DDP is just crazy. <laughs> just crazy. I mean, uh, in two months training, we are two days off. It's always, always 
fitness, media training, driving, races. It was just unbelievable to do 14 races in two months. The DDP teaches the gamers everything they need to know about racing, from diet, fitness and psychology to handling, breaking points and racecraft. But it hasn't always been this way. Lucas O'Donnell really was a guinea pig. We were making it up as we went along. We were seeing what skills he had, what skills he didn't have. There wasn't a manual that said, turn a racing driver from a gamer in three months. Now when we find a GT Academy winner, we know that we can turn them into a racing driver. I think every year we run the driver development programme, we learn a lesson and we roll that on into the next year's driver development programme. So every year we evolve and become a little more thorough, a little better and we learn lessons from hard knocks of previous years. What we do, we add different modules that we feel perhaps the previous winner has not really been particularly good at. We take their weaknesses really and then create a module that we put straight into the next drive development programme. Racecraft being one of those actually, a simulation session that really gives a big bang for the buck so to speak. This isn't something that we dreamed up 10 years ago to know that we're here today. We've had to try different things, we've had to fail sometimes, but honestly, in those seven years, we've turned what was a good training programme for racing drivers into one of the best training programmes for racing drivers in the world. During the DDP, the drivers gain their international racing licence. This gives them the opportunity to race globally. GT Academy winners now have raced pretty much all over the world, America, Asia, Australia, obviously lots of racing in Europe, out in Dubai for the 24 hour race several times, so we're racing all over the world. We've had drivers racing in everything from the Micro Cup in Canada to single seater championships. Lucas Ordonez racing in Japan Formula 3, Jan Mardenberg racing in GP3, the Formula 1 support series, and of course, three of our drivers from GT Academy racing at Le Mans in the top class, LMP1. So this is a story of racing all around the world, different nationalities, whether they be French, Spanish, Indian, Thai, and the fantastic thing about it is, whether we send these guys to Canada, Japan, or Australia, they always fit in with the team and the cultures, and they're learning a huge amount as people, as well as racing drivers. For the drivers that make the grade and go on to race for the GT Academy team, it can change their lives forever. When I won GT Academy, it was the best moment of my life. When I won, actually, I cried like a baby because it was just too much emotions for me. <laughs> it's like I won the lottery, you know? It's, it's, it, there's no words that what GT Academy does in one year. My dream has always wanted to be a racing driver. You know, the prize was massive. The prize was to race in the Dubai 24 hours as a professional driver. I didn't know that I'll be racing in GP3 in my second year. I didn't realize how much my life was going to change. It took me about three months to finally realizing that I was a racing driver. Last year I was studying mechanical engineering, writing my final exams, and now I'm traveling the world. I've been in Egypt, in the Philippines, in Italy, in France, so many places. And the most important thing is that I'm doing what I like. When I was at home uh, playing on my PlayStation on Gran Turismo, I was always driving the GT500 cars, the, the Nismo car, the Calsonic and, and other 500 cars. And it was always a dream to drive that car one day. And now I'm driving these cars in real. It's something unbelievable. I will never expect that before, for sure. While the concept for GT Academy was seeing success on the track, Pro racing drivers who had progressed using the traditional route were still unsure of the idea. I think in the early days, you know, established racing drivers were very skeptical, like I was, about uh, having a gamer sharing a circuit with them. When it was just starting up, uh, I was an F1 actually at the time, and I have to say I was hugely skeptical about it. I was a traditionalist, having seen the drivers that have come through it and, and seen what they can actually do in sports cars and how they've developed. It's turned me around. I saw the first series on TV and um, it looked like a really uh, you know, cool thing to be a part of. And I remember in the second season, even though I was a racing driver, I was like, oh, I'll still go on to the game and try and see if I could qualify for it or get closer and just getting absolutely annihilated every, every single time, not getting anywhere near. I guess in the initial stages of GT Academy, all the professional race car drivers that have worked hard to progress through the different forms of motorsport, you know, they were always a little bit standoffish from the, from the GT Academy graduates, which is only a natural thing. What's it like racing against guys on PlayStation? Well, thankfully, I don't know which ones they are when I come up to pass them. Let's see, if everyone can do it, then uh, it's not very good for us. So, uh, yeah. 
guys like Lucas, guys like Jan, guys like Wolfie are showing now there is a genuine alternative route. For the old school guys, they find it a bit hard to take. It will be very interesting, you know, to put Mark Webber and Jan Mardenborough in an identical LMP2 car and just see who would set the better lap. They'd be bloody close. The gamers have been answering any critics they have on the track by winning races and top-level series all over the world. So this season I'm racing in uh, LMP1, the Nissan GTR LM Nismo in the World Endurance Championship. And alongside that I'm doing GP3 for my second year. Uh, racing on the F1 calendar is uh, it's, it's cool and uh, it puts you in the shop window. Everybody who's anybody in motorsport mainly is at an F1 event. So if you do well, it's been shown that you can make the jump from GP3, GP2 to Formula 1. Jan's performances and podiums in GP3 did not go unnoticed and in Monza he had the chance to progress and race in a GP2 car for the first time. And the winner of GT Academy 2014 is... Team France, Gattaz! <laughs> Following on in Jan's footsteps is 2014 winner Gaetan Palatou. Of course you always have good drivers and you have great drivers. We managed to find some great drivers. And the latest star in the line, if you like, is Gaetan Palato, who is a French guy who only one year ago had never raced a car. And this year he's raced at Le Mans. He's also raced in LMP3, in GT3, and everywhere he's gone, he's been quick. Just getting a gamer to Le Mans within a year of winning the prize was remarkable. Seeing him on the grid at Le Mans made me very proud of what we managed to achieve with him in such a short period of time. It was completely unexpected from our end and he was really surprised. We've been incredibly impressed with him. In fact, he's done, he's done a great job all season in the in Le Mans series as well. If I see me one year ago and now, just totally another person. I couldn't think it could be so fast. I mean, start my racing career and 10 months after I do Le Mans. So as a development point for Nissan, it's just unbelievable, you know? Just in two months, you get so high level in motorsport. Just crazy, just crazy. Over the coming series, we will blow open the secretive world of motorsport by exploring how the team are improving this year's training program. Join us next week, where we will catch up with 2014 winner Gaetan Palatou we'll find out how he went from gamer to Le Mans in just 12 months.